Greetings, folks. In this monstrous box, we have the MyFly Dream Crosswind Mini, 1600 millimeter wingspan, twin motor, heavy weight carrier, uh, serious mapping camera carrier platform. Uh, it is uh, a few years ago I tested the MyFly Dream Nimbus, which is a which was a, a sensational, uh, big workhorse. They say the all-up weight is three and a half to five kilograms which is way heavier than anything else apart from a big tiger moth which is about three and a half kilos i suppose so serious plane and it's going to be fun hand launching it because it doesn't have landing gear anyway let's open it up and check it out i have watched nicola's video uh, archangel rc and uh, He put it through its paces very nicely. I, I'm, as always, uh, I'm going to try and build it at minimum weight uh, and see how <laughs> sort of slow and easy we can fly with it. Uh, I'm not really into long range FPV or mapping or anything like that, so uh, I'll just be testing out how it flies at its sort of absolute minimum. We get some iFly Dream stickers, a uh, pack of Plastic bits, plywood bits, it's a total build apparently. Nothing is sort of pre-assembled, so that will be fun. I've just done a quick pre-assembly and look at the size of this thing it is enormous really nice plastic uh, fuselage ends and uh, wing ends uh, and we've got electrical connectors to fit in there and little snap catches to hold the wings in like that enormous amount of battery bay there all the way back look at the space in there get a couple of alternative covers for the battery area and that clips onto that uh, spar there. Here's the other one. We get these little clips that clip on and the cells fit on like that. Sort of underhung motors which looks pretty cool. Timber decking for this area and inside there for uh, for the batteries so that will accommodate the two different battery covers. And the tail area is interesting too. We also have the, the, the plastic ends, uh, which also accommodate this nice hinge setup here. So you can have that operates both sides of the elevator via a, a sort of a hexagonal shaft going through there. You can have single or double um, elevator servos if you want, and that will be that will be uh, detachable. When I'm building it, I won't do a full build, it's going to take too long, I think. I'll just get on with building it and, um, and I'll talk about it when we've finished. Very, very big and impressive beast. All right, let's get to building. Time to have a look at the build so far. It's going really nicely. I'm really enjoying the build. Uh, all the pieces are there and there's even spares and options. For example, this uh, sort of a plastic surround for the uh, hatch cover there allows you to have an option of two different uh, hatches that's uh, sort of an FPV one with uh, room for the FPV gear there um, that has little catches under here and uh, the clip that hooks onto the uh, spar there or we have a, a, a big more aerodynamic one fills in the space nicely for more efficiency spot for a GPS here and there's a little cover that fits there like that there's sort of uh, spots and covers for everything here's a spot for your RC receiver I think and that has a cover there like that catches on everything and a little hard spot in there for it to hook into we have a, a plywood mount there plywood battery mount there and a strap the wings hook in and hook out with sort of spring-loaded catches, which uh, I'll show you photos of them. Can't get that one out. Try this one. And there we go. 
So I have to loosen them up over time, but you can see these spring-loaded catches there. You have to uh, assemble these things, but they're all quite easy. There's just a spring, a latch, and a cover, basically. Two on each wing, and we have the same sort of setup on the tail. Have these little latches that you push forward and it disconnects like that and the elevator uh, you can either have a servo on each side for each side of the elevator or you can connect it via a hexagonal axle there which is what I'll do and only have one servo and then that uh, sort of meets up with that giving you the full elevator action Plastic hinges that you have to glue in everywhere, which are really good. Plastic hinges on the elevator, as uh, plastic hinges on the ailerons as well. And I need to glue the tail on like this. And there's a hole going down here to pass the servo cable down through there. Servos get bolted into here, and you get a little cover as well. So it fits in like that, all nice and protected. So it's very well thought out, very sort of professional design I would say. Anyway, I'll crack on and uh, should be up and flying in no time. Alright, after two days, two pleasant days of gluing and soldering, it's all together, ready to fly. I'm using uh, Sunny Sky 2212 1100 kV motors with the uh, 9x6 props. Uh, they're from the uh, Sonic Binary. The servos, uh, the Metal Gear servos, uh, and now there's one thing, because you're fitting servos into defined spaces, uh, they have to be the right size, uh, and I have had to grind down the little tabs to make them fit in, especially with the elevator servo, um, there's only a defined gap for the servo arm to fit into, and I found that this particular servo that came from the Sonic Binary, which um, it's 18 millimetres from the top to the bottom of the tab there, and that's too uh, far by about three or four millimetres, so I had to change to a different servo. Uh, the one I actually put in there was a Turner G TGY uh, 9018, one of my favourite Metal Gear servos. I just happened to have some of them available. And that's only about 15 millimetres that distance, so that fits in better. Still gluing the nacelles on there. I've got sort of tape and um, pins. I had to grind. birds on the roof so that I could easily get the wings on and off I had to oh, there we go I had to grind down the bottom part of that little hole so that the latch would clear it uh, electrical connectors these are really good connectors uh, I soldered them up two servo wires and the ESC wires still got another availability for another servo wire if I wanted to put video transmitter and receiver out in the wing but I don't need to but they work really nicely. Click it in and they marry up beautifully and they're bolted in and they're supported. They're not going anywhere. They're really good. Flying weight all up is, uh, it's fairly lightweight for this plane. 2.2 kilograms and that is with two 3300 4S lipos right up in the nose. Balances on the centre of gravity almost. I might need a little bit more weight. Centre of gravity is 80 millimetres from the leading edge, which is right on the sort of the front of the servo wire channel. Uh, it's balancing pretty well. I'll, I'll just put a camera on the front just to bring it right there. I, I'm pretty sure this will be very forgiving for centre of gravity anyway, because I'm going to be wanting to put a uh, camera up on the nose for the great view over the twins. Now these dots here, uh, there were sort of these mounting diamond shapes in there and that's because this can also be set up as uh, a VTOL with sort of four quad motors on arms. Um, that looks like a pretty amazing setup. It's supposed to come with two different bottom hatches, one for landing gear and one without. Mine came with two the same, not, not specifically for the landing gear, but um, I think landing gear would be pretty good on a plane this big and heavy especially if you're up around the five kilogram mark, which is uh, probably the maximum weight you, you can fly it at. But anyway, I have enjoyed building this, ready to go. Let's 
go to the field and uh, get some airtime.